Yeah, about had a wreck here. Coming down this hill, and it's kind of muddy here. The tractor was sliding a little bit. Our corn patch isn't looking too good, though, Randy. Today we're gathered up here for our annual combine clinic. This cover crop uh, in that period of time has already achieved well over 24 inches of growth. All this will winter terminate. Today we're gathered up here for our annual combine clinic. We've asked uh, Lucas, uh, product support specialist from Sloan's, to kind of lead this uh, training. And then we've got Matt Watson, who's customer support from John Deere. Both just great resources. You know, we got some great operators, but some of these skill sets aren't used but once a year in the fall season when we go to the field. So what we'd like to do, just to keep our guys sharp and on top of their game and and optimizing all the features that uh, we afford them on these uh, piece of equipment. We try to bring them in, uh, some additional expertise, run through everything and let them ask some questions. Where the ear breaks off, you want the ear to snap off on the stalk about halfway up the deck plate. So if you see all the ear snapping off here, what might that be an indication of? If they're snapping off the stalk, you know, the stalk's getting pulled down and, but all the ears are hitting the deck plate right here, clear up front here. You're running your head too fast. Speed. Your head's yeah. probably running maybe a little bit too fast. Okay, and, and sometimes we do that to try to process the stock material. You know, we run our head a little bit faster to maybe try to process the stock material a little bit more. Uh, but really you kind of want it about midway up the deck plates is where you want to see that ear hitting the deck plates. If it's all the way back here, that's going to create a couple things. If it's all the way back here, you're going to probably uproot that stalk. In a lot of cases, you're going to take in more material. Um, you're going to get some debris build up right in here. You know, that you can cause some plugging. You're going to be more apt to plug your head, but you're probably going to take in more material than maybe you necessarily want to, especially if it's in a greener condition or in the morning. Um, you know, if you're running your head too slow, then that can be uh, that can be a consideration you want to look at. Well, I guess we'll head on around. Make sure you wipe this off and keep the debris off of it so that they don't leak. Um, that's one reason they went to this little check valve block here. So it used to be the check valve was in the combine. And so when you disconnected, if you had the reel up on the header, if the reel was up in the air and you disconnected, all that pressure was stored right here at these little, these little cartridges. Well, then when you reconnected, there was that release of that pressure and sometimes that could roll an O-ring or mess up a packing or something, and you would have leaks here. So now the check valve is here so that you, know, you have to actually activate something to dislodge the check valve in here so that you can move oil. So if I disconnect with pressure on this side, it doesn't matter because it's stored here. So that just makes these less susceptible to leaks. That's what all this is about. Um, not a lot really to talk about here much more. This filter is for your emission system, is all this filter is really there to do. So all my emissions are in this rear, in this rear enclosure back there, that big green box on the back. And I've got this little, looks like a supercharger off a small block. What it's doing, it's pulling air from that filter, and then you can kind of follow the tubes, and it's blowing the air back into that enclosure for your emission system. And so that's doing two things. It's putting somewhat cooled air into that to keep it cool because those things do have a tendency to get very warm just from the job that they're doing. The other thing it does is it pressurizes it, which helps keep the dirt and dust out of that so that you know there's no, no chance of a thermal event. We just concluded our uh, combine clinic to get our guys up to speed. Harvest is just a couple weeks away. We want to thank uh, Sloan's and, and John Deere for supporting us in this effort. They've got the guys uh, excited and, and all up to speed. So uh, it's been a great day and uh, couldn't, couldn't ask for a better session.
Well, it's been a few weeks since we've last been out here. This is uh, something that we've extremely excited about here on the property. This is a cocktail mix cover crop that uh, is new to us and we're evaluating uh, this for future use on the property. This happens to be the organic field that we talked about. I think we planted this about 30 days ago, so we're just coming back out to evaluate and, and continue to assess this. So I wanted you guys to kind of go with me here and, and look and see what we're seeing. As we discussed before, this is an eight-way mix, cover crop planted in an organic uh, scenario, so this field's in transition to organic. What we're trying to accomplish here is this is a legume-based cover crop mix, so we're wanting to generate some and fixate some nitrogen in the soil. We did do a pre-application of manure here prior to the establishment of the cover crop to give us a little additional in, and then this field next spring will be planted to blue corn. So what I tried to do here is I wanted to get uh, a lot of biodiversity. That's the reason for the eight-way mix. Looking at the amount of growth, it took a week or so to get out of the ground, so we're about two to three weeks into the growth cycle, and I'm just really extremely impressed. As you can see, this cover crop uh, in that period of time has already achieved well over 24 inches of growth. I anticipate before this crop, all this will winter terminate. So at the first killing frost, we'll terminate this, but I'm hoping to achieve about six foot of growth. So that's gonna be all kinds of biomass. And then the thing that we're trying to supercharge are microbes in the soil. So this is all about soil biology and what we can accomplish with these cover crop mixes. And as you can see, the amount of biomass here, what it's doing for us, it's armoring the soil. So we're putting a nice vegetative barrier to the elements and uh, you know this all be turned under in the spring so we're going to put uh, a lot of this biomass so which will be turned into humus and and just really uh, keep uh, something growing 12 months out of the year which is just extremely critical i know when i brought mike the last time he his eyes got really big here thinking how beneficial this was going to be to the whitetail. I know he's going to be wanting me to plant this in other areas of the farm. The next time we're out here, I hope to bring him back and we're going to identify some of these for his benefit and just uh, again, kind of stage this crop and look at just how vigorous and how much growth we're getting in a relatively short period of time. So being uh, winter killed, you know, we're kind of against the clock and we just want to generate as much growth to attribute to the biomass that'll turn back under in the spring and really uh, prepares for our organic uh, blue corn that we're gonna grow next year. So hope you guys are excited about this as I am. I just think it looks tremendous. I can't imagine that we could have got a better stand and just the diversity of these mix um, is just you know something that I think is unparalleled in anything that we've done before. So we're gonna follow this way through to uh, the point in time it self terminates and hope to have you back to uh, watch the progression of the growth here.